Before I jump onto the next step, I want to do a quick comparison as now that I have this skimmer out of the ground and we can look at them right next to each other. Uh, we'll start with this skimmer. Remember, this is uh, 15 years old. It's about 20 year old technology. And uh, you know, you start with a faceplate, and this is what uh, attaches your liner to here and gives you the waterproof seal. This particular unit has a six inch uh, throat. You could also get an eight inch throat in this particular unit. I don't know if you can see these uh, holes right here, but there used to be a, a door that would swing in here. And that's what would make it not very fish friendly because a fish could swim in through the hole and then it could become trapped inside that or couldn't swim out because of the doorway. Uh, so you have either a six inch pole, let's call it six inch doorway to pull surface debris or an eight inch doorway to pull surface debris. And that's what was the, uh, the responsibility of that, of that weir door. Now, once you got in here, this is the net that you would have to clean, hose it off, and then you would get it into this spot. Now, remember, as we put this in, this particular piece needed to slide and kind of attach to the bottom of this. But oftentimes this would blow back and then debris would come back around and get down to the pump. Fish could swim through here and get down to the pump. Turtles, frogs, rocks, all kinds of stuff could make their way down to the pump. So a lot of times people would uh, fry their pumps because... You know, they would get a rock in there and break impellers. Some of the other factors that we uh, had problems with this particular skimmer is when this net would swell with debris, uh, whether it was algae or leaves or whatever, when it would get neglected a little bit, it could trigger this float because it could swell enough to where it influenced the float and it started to press the float down. So water would start coming into the pond unnecessarily. So those are some of the factors that... Um, we were dealing with back then but as i said it served us really well for many years but the new technology what we're dealing with is uh i have this nice wide throat that's open and if you remember when we when we were pulling this skimmer out of the ground the water hyacinth was caught in the front of there a couple small pieces because this opening was here it would trap the stuff so i have this wide throat so any any debris can come in if you have a lot of debris on the top of the pond it'll make its way into the the throat of this we have a this is what's interesting this is a six inch weir this is a circular weir but it's six inches across but if you measure the circumference it's about 15 inches so we have a great deal of um water pull remember we have the doorway of six inch or eight inch it's that's the responsibility to pull stuff towards the towards the skimmer i have 15 inches and pulling towards the skimmer so you can see we're almost twice as efficient as their biggest uh, model in at that time so a great thing about this is our uh, our debris basket Everything has to come into the debris basket and the basket plate completely encloses the top end of the skimmer. So frogs, uh, turtles, fish, anything like that can't make its way down to the pump and um, find an early demise for either the pump or the fish or the turtle. So it's a fish friendly skimmer because the fish can swim in, make their way in and make their way out. And um, we, when we put the float in here, the automatic fill valve it comes in at an angle and if you neglect this basket and it gets all clogged up it's not going to influence that auto fill to kick on and start adding water than it doesn't need to do so those are just some of the factors that make this um, the newer technology so much more efficient and worth taking the time to dig out an old skimmer and drop in the new technology so now that we've given you the the differences between 20 years ago and today then i can uh, move forward and show you how we're going to plumb this guy up and get it installed in the ground so the name of this skimmer with a new technology is called the Helix Pond Skimmer. And you need to know it was designed for energy efficient pond pumps. So not every single pump that's on the market today is going to be, com it's not going to be compatible with this. So uh, I want to connect you with our group of authorized Helix contractors and authorized Helix uh, retailers because they'll be able to help you uh, make sure that the pond pump that you have on your pond is, is compatible in case you're considering doing this retrofit. But this is important for you to know at this point because the pump that we had in this pond, I knew it was compatible already. So with that being said, I do have a, a specialty fitting here. It's a check valve assembly, has a nice little angle in here, and it allows us to get this uh, pump into our very compact area right here. Uh, I have a template right here. I, I get my bodies without any holes in them so I can be really versatile in the field. So I've created this template right here and that's where this particular check valve assembly lines up just perfect with. So I'm going to drill this right now but most of you if you're ordering this you're probably going to have the bulkhead already installed in it and then you're going to want to connect with the network of Helix guys to make sure that the pump you have is compatible. So with that being said I'm going to move forward and I'm going to get this drilled and get this pump installed and then we'll move forward and get this thing plumbed.